hi guys welcome again to my youtube channel i'm isaac larry and i'm here with ruben ruben is a program manager at a research organization and he has a side hustle he had a side business that he runs and which is dog breeding he breeds dogs for sale and um, together with his day job his full-time job so can you tell me what your did i introduce you well well you did your best yes <laughs> that's right that's okay. So can you tell me what your full-time job is like? Okay, well, it's a, it's, um, it's a 9 to 5 job, basically. Okay. Um, go to work in the morning, Mondays to Fridays. And um, when we get to work, we do our usual activities or our research activities or our paper writing. Okay. And then we end up the day at 5 o'clock, basically. It's a, it's a normal 9 to 5 job. So, how did you get into dog breeding? How did you know about this business? How did you get into it? Well, dog breeding for me isn't, wasn't by chance. Um, I was born into a family that loved dogs. Okay. My father had so many dogs growing up. Okay. So, in my house, at every point in time, we have dogs. Even till this moment, my parents are still together. Um, they stay in Jaws, and both of them still have dogs. My mom has her own dog. My dad has his own dog. So, we're from a dog-loving family. So dog breeding didn't come, um, I didn't go into it because I had interest in going okay. into breeding dogs as, um, for business purpose. I just loved dogs okay. and then of course there are opportunities in everything that is done properly. So I kind of basically inherited the love. Okay, so can you tell me what's this business like? How can one get started with it? Okay, first things first, I advise anyone that wants to go into a business you must have passion for that business okay you can't go into any business without having interest first and then passion for it because with your interest and your passion then your knowledge for the business you can translate into making income okay okay and at the same time when the business is not so profitable or it's not profitable at all it in, it takes your passion to keep you going in that business yeah yeah so for dog breeding um um at casti canal we that's the name of your business. Yes, yeah, that's the name of the business. So you have a registered company for your dog breeding business? No, I have a farm, a registered agri farm. Okay. That's the choice investment limited. It's okay. an agri business. Okay. Um, also a side hustle. Oh, right? so let me just order into like some agricultural products or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I'm into other agricultural businesses. Oh. I've done I've gone into um, fish farming before. Okay. I've gone into poultry farming before. Oh wow. Yeah, several other agri businesses. As long as they don't interfere. Before you're not doing that again. Oh well, um, it's. I think I I just disposed my last um, layers, so I've oh, not restocked. Okay. You've not yeah. restocked, oh, I see. Yeah, so, so but Casti Canal has been there for the past four years. Um, 2019, I got a dog, a Rottweiler. Oh okay. So that's what Do you I remember was. how much that was? Yes, that's about eighty-five thousand. I got it about eighty-five thousand uh, as a puppy. A puppy, yes. Oh, okay. um, at six weeks old. Is it still alive? Oh no, I lost Ginger. That was my first dog. I lost Ginger two years ago. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. sorry about that. A year, a year and six months ago. So, oh, wow. Sorry yeah, about so, that. Yes. So, um, when I started with the Rottweiler, we had. Um, How many dogs do you have now? Okay, I have um, four adult dogs three females and one male. I have one King Corso. Okay. I have two Rottweilers, a male and a female. Okay. And then I have one Bull Mastiff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, those are the dogs I have. But I have puppies too. My King Corso just littered um, some puppies. So. Oh, littered. That is like just gave birth, right? Yeah, just gave birth, yes. How many? How many? Oh, she gave birth to nine and then we lost two, fortunately. Oh. We have seven doing well. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right, yeah, you were saying something about um how one can get started and yeah so the first thing is it depends on how much you have every business you must have the capital yeah capital i mean is not just getting the dog do you have money to feed the dog okay for a dog to come out very well you must be able to feed the dog properly okay it's not getting expensive food yes that is also yeah, there but that is like feeding them with what do you feed them with is it rice in the house yeah so um i'll come to the to the menu i mean what i give them okay later but Starting up in the business, one must be, must first of all um, have capital to start okay. the business. Okay, you must have money to buy the dog. You must have money to house the dog. You must have money to care for the dog. Then you must have money to feed the dog. Oh wow! So if you don't have money to, if you have money to buy the dog, but you don't have money to house the dog, the dog will die of harsh conditions or die of um, poor treatment. 
you must have money to um, take care of your dog. The dog must have his his, um, his, uh, his or her shorts. So maybe if you know that it's it's shorts at the appropriate time, the first, and then of course annual um, and um, anti rabies shorts and all those kind of shorts. They must be able to deworm routinely. Must be able to give them multivitamin and other vaccines. And then any type of maybe if she's having or he uh, if the dog is having any kind of um, health challenge, must be able to manage that challenge. Yeah. So they can be maybe as a result of the feeding, they can be um, maybe infected with one, you know. Okay. And then you must be able to treat the dog. So that's caring for the dog. Then you must be able to um, feed the dog. Um, people just buy dogs and then give the dog leftovers from what they eat. Um, you must see a dog like a baby, a child, to be able to feed the dog. For me, I give my dog proper feeding. I feed my dog. I have a different meal for my dog. I have wow. a different menu for my dog. I don't give my dog. I don't give, yes, like I give a lot of responsibility. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's like having a child, you know, for you that wants to treat it as a business, you know, yeah. take, make out time for, for, for that. So for me, um, proper feeding is one good thing that makes your dog come out well. Then um, um, you must be able to house the dog. I've, I've said that already. So those are the things that the components that you must have. And then if you have these um, funds over time, yeah. Then you can translate it into business because I mean it's not when you just buy the dog as a puppy that it starts giving beds or it starts making money for you. No, okay. you have to train it to a particular period of time. You have to be patient to wait for the dog to grow, mature, then you know begin to litter. Yeah. Of course. Then again, getting the dog is one thing that I always advise anybody that is starting off in a business. If you want to get a dog, make sure you get your dog from a reliable source. A reliable source, I mean, is somebody who knows the history of the dog. Okay. Okay. What I mean by history of the dog is, okay, the mother of my dog, for instance, gave birth to my boomer still gave birth to 13. Oh, okay. So, I know that from this litter, the mother, the first litter she had was 13, second litter 11, the fourth litter that I bought, 13. Oh, that is a lot. So, I know that this dog's history, she has a history of giving birth to so many puppies, so I'm interested in, in getting a puppy from that. Again, I know who the father of the of my, my dog is. Okay. This male dog is so, so you know, has social history, is being taken care of or managed by mm. social person. You trust that this person can manage the dog properly. You trust that this dog person is feeding the dog properly. Yeah. And then this person has, you know, has a proper, you know, then you can have, you can take a dog from that kind of canal. Then when you have that dog, you also make sure that the dog comes out well. Feeding is also very important. You have to feed the dog to come out very well. Then oh. in breeding too, you have to know the history of the dog you are breeding with. So if, for instance, you started a dog with just a, pop, a, a female dog, you don't have money to buy the male. You must be able to know, okay, this male that is mating with my dog. Yeah. The male, this is where the male is coming from. This is the father of the male. This is the mother of the male. This is the history of the male. You know, to be sure that this dog is healthy, this dog can father a lot of child. So, like my rot, my rot is a very good male. I have a box head, large bone, um, rot male. Male okay. rot. And um, his first litter was um, 10. The, the lady lost, I think, two puppies or so. And then the puppies were very beautiful. Wow. So, and then his father also littered that much, you know. So yeah. the number of litters, the quality of the puppies are part of the things that one should look at before going into um, dog business. So I've mentioned you being able to have love and passion for the business. I've yeah. mentioned you being able to know the history of the dog and getting the dog, the proper dog from the reliable source. Then again, proper feeding, proper housing, proper money. So when you were speaking, you talked about being patient. So how long can one get the return on investment? Okay, yeah. So for the return on investment, um, it's not static. It's not fixed okay. for every agribusiness. Because, I mean, um, you can anticipate that, okay, the dog at one year, six months, yes. for a normal Caucasian or a, a GSD, a gla uh, uh, slant back, or whatever kind of dog will come on heat for the first. No, you don't cross a dog on her first heat. So you can oh, say, okay. okay um, on why, the, anyways? Do you know why? Yeah. It's, yeah well, they, they, it is sometimes dogs come on heat at six months, eight months. Okay. And some come on heat um, at one year. Okay. The age for you, can, you know, of course, you will not allow a, a child that a, a teenager that is sixteen. Yeah. She's still a teenager, or maybe a fourteen to conceive because you you assume that that child will not. There are so many factors not to allow that, that will not permit you yeah. to allow a girl that is as as young as okay. 14 to have a child. So that's the same thing you translate to a dog. A dog that is six months is not so mature to carry a child. 
it can be very um, burdensome. Okay. You know, the she may not be very mature in terms of the weight, in terms of the size. So, okay, but she, she may come on heat. Yes. At six months, so you have to wait and be patient for the second or third heat. My my first rot came on heat at six months, or there about five six months, and then came on heat again at eight months. So yeah. I didn't cross her in the first and second heat. I had to wait till she's up to a year. So it's advised to wait minimum of second heat before you cross okay. for your first time. Then and for the male, at least should be a year, um, six months. That okay. is about eighteen months for your mates. Before you meet, before you meet, it just it helps the maturity and helps them you know do well and in the process in the uh, in the long term. Okay. In the long term. So. Um, what was I saying? You're about talking the return about on the return on investment. Yes. Yeah, so for the return on the investment, um, like I said, when I started um, again about four years ago, um, I started with my rod, female rod. Um, I didn't cross her again. Like I said, the first heat, second heat. Then when I wanted to now cross her, and um, in the process of crossing her, you know, after meeting her, you have to restrain her from moving. Yes. So she tried. She strangled herself. You know, and she just you know put her head on the uh, um, the space that uh -oh. doesn't, and then you know tried in the process of struggling. You know, she strangled herself. So I lost that dog, and I decided I got another one. You know, and that was the only dog I had at that time. That was the only money I had to you know buy yeah. a dog. So, and um, patience. I mean, is on a normal day for those people people who are not interested in dog business or who doesn't have passion for and mm -hmm. love for dogs can say, okay, I've lost this dog. I'm not going back again to the business. Well, I got another dog and I got another one and both of them at that time that I got them had not even given birth but I still continue feeding them a year two years they've not given birth I still continue feeding them I know that I've done the health check I'm sure that they're not sick perhaps um, we did not do the timing properly there are a lot of factors that could you know warrant not again not restraining them properly could be another reason uh, so um, and at the end, I think I got it right. My dogs have started littering. Yeah, littering. Yeah. So, averagely, how long will you say one should wait to get the return on yeah, investment? Yeah. So, for the for a female dog to give birth, you can say minimum of one year six months. Uh, not okay. minimum. Um, um, at most one year six months, she should have you know started conceiving. It's possible that it can be longer. Okay. Because maybe at that time you did not cross properly, you did not get the timing well. She did not conceive. Because it also can also be as a result of the male too. Okay. It's not just the female dog. The female dog that's the problem. So it can be as a result of male. So um, a lot of factors can play. So let's just say between um, one year, one year six months, then your dog should maybe conceive for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so again, it depends on the breed of the dog you have. If you are you are lucky enough to have your first dog and your dog gives birth at one year. Um, let's say one year or one year two months or one year six months yes and she gave birth to like five six seven liters um, seven dogs in that liter then you have you have started it well maybe wow. by the second third birth because most dogs can give birth twice a year some dogs once a year okay uh, so if they give birth twice a year and a dog gives you like seven or eight puppies in, in, in a liter twice a year that is about um, let's say uh, a very good return on investment because okay. So you have, rot, you have puppies right now. How much yes. is a puppy going for? Okay, so my Ken Koso is a very good breed. I have a very beautiful, um, excellent breed of um, Ken Koso. And I decided to use a very beautiful breed too. I mean, okay. um, we will say the they use the word percentage. You know how many percentage pure okay. is the dog? Like how many percentage pure of that breed is the dog? So my dogs are very wonderful breeds. Uh, um, so I would say averagely, my puppy, I, will, I won't say anything more less than 260,000. 260,000? Yeah, for my King Koso. Wow, that's a lot of money. And you have five of them. I have seven of them. You have seven of them? Yeah. Wow. I'm also going into this business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, you're nice. looking at the, the, the price. I yeah, mean, but the feeding, the overnight expenses. Of, yeah, of course, of course. So what does it cost you to get food for them? Okay, so currently I'm using an, um, I'm adding artificial feeding to the breast feeding that the mother is okay. giving to the puppies, and the reason is because um, they are several, they are more, and okay. some of them won't have the opportunity to um, suckle properly because the breasts are not even in terms of size and content. Okay. Sometimes they, so the breasts up at the upper part of the body, upper limb, yes, um, 
may have very little milk okay or the milk, the milk may not be sufficient so um the the puppy that will be suckling on that may, yes. may not have enough milk for growth and these dogs are big dogs you know they, they are dogs that need a lot of protein and nutrients to grow okay. so usually um it's good it's advised to supplement the feeding so okay. i'm supplementing with an artificial um a can milk for puppies that cost me a can for about four thousand. Wow, four thousand! Yeah. How long um, does the can last? Okay, so in a feeding, I can use um, let's say averagely six to seven spoons, um, baby. Um, let's say measure, measuring spoon, uh, like a teaspoon, it's the same size with a teaspoon. Let's say six to seven teaspoons, so a reasonable amount of uh, boiled water, very clean water. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and I feed them twice a day in addition to the breastfeeding. Okay. So if if I wasn't if they weren't breastfeeding, I'll feed more than that, maybe five times, six times a day. Okay. Yeah, but since they are breastfeeding, I just feed them twice a day, at least for the first one week. Mm -hmm. Then the second one week I need to also supplement that feeding for another one week and then like that. So how long does one can last? Like like I said, it depends. Um the one I have now currently yeah. um, has lasted for like a week. Okay. It has lasted for like a week, yes, because um, like I said, it's just twice. I feed okay. Them. So, what do you feed the grown up dogs? Oh, yeah. So, before she conceived, I, I have a formula. I don't want to share my feeding formula. On, oh, okay. On oh, there's board. a feeding formula for dogs? Yeah, everybody, every canal. Something has like a, a recipe? Formula, a recipe, yes, for your dogs to come out. Okay. Well. It's 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 oh. it's something I can share in different videos. I'm, video. I'm learning. <laughs> All right. I can share in different videos so that they can watch okay. and learn. So how do you get these recipes? Do you um, buy them or do you sell them? Oh okay. well, so different. Um, you can learn from other other people too. Like okay. you can learn from me. Um, I can share my recipe maybe, but I don't have them handy here. Okay. Them. I mean, you can you can learn from other people. You can go to other people's farms to oh, okay. to see what their formulas are. Then you can also um, rearrange them, okay. you know, to suit your pockets. As a young or starting or a startup, you okay. must be able to feed in a way you can manage. For people like us that have gone, you know, that we've had good experience, we've yeah. trained puppies for a very long time. Usually, we can um, we can spend more in terms okay. of feeding our dogs. But I, apart from having the local formula, I also supplement with. Um, solid food that is a um, booster. I use booster. Okay, so just to share a little of the formula, um, I have a formula that I feed. One of the um, recipe I have for my dogs, I have a formula for soya bean. Yes, the way you process it, it's not just okay. soya bean. Okay. Any corn, normal corn, um, uh, granite paste. I use granite paste to okay. improve the protein, and then of course granite has some oil and then um, little fat. So um, that, then I also have. A formula where I use, I use rice, I also okay. use um, um, granite cake, okay. then I use crayfish, of course you need to, be, you need to make it very yeah. attractive to them, so I use crayfish or crayfish blend or crayfish extract, um, then um, and of course supplement with um, sometimes blood meal, I keep blood meal, okay. I go to the abattoir, I get blood meal, I do blood meal for my dog. Then I add solid food too. That is the artificial solid food that you buy in the market. Um, Do you things. give them leftovers? Yeah, I don't actually have leftovers in my house. And the simple reason is that my I come from a background where we don't waste food. So oh, I see. we don't cook what we, we have to finish our food. So my okay. dogs don't usually eat my leftovers. Leftovers. Yeah. So. But can you get your grown-up dogs sold, or it's just the puppies? Yeah, I actually bought a grown-up a, a grown-up um, dog female yeah. dog before so um the thing is um like i said if you know the farm this puppy or this dog is coming from you can at any point in time buy a dog it is not always advised to buy a grown-up dog male or yeah. female because you don't know the history of the dog however if you are buying from a reliable farm you know the history of the dog you have seen dog you can of course buy a grown-up dog it's mm -hmm. okay to buy a grown -up dog yeah wow awesome so do you have any challenges that you you experience doing this business yeah so currently i'm living in a um in a rented apartment and i'm staying with neighbors oh, okay um, and neighbors have guests and guests sometimes get harassed from oh with by your dogs by my dog so some of them 
then um, I have a very um, accommodating neighbor. Um, she's a mother of a, a young chap, and she's very nice to my dog. So I think that's part of the benefits I've had. Okay. So if you have, a, if you are if you are living in a rented apartment, and you have neighbors that don't like dogs, okay. Then you you be certain that you are definitely going to leave that compound in the nearest future. <laughs> because they are so, going to complain and report yeah, you to the landlord. Today. Yeah, okay. then you have to leave. Okay. But you have a cage for them now. Yeah, I house them properly. My dogs don't roam about. But you know, once you touch the gates, they know you are a stranger is coming in, or you knock at the door, they know, and then the wow. next thing they start backing. People will tend to be coming. Or people will tend to know. Ah, so you are just breeding for selling. You are not doing it for security or. Currently, I once in a while. Okay. Uh, um, of course, the country does not need, I mean, so everyone needs to protect him, his or herself. Um, so once in a while, I allow my dogs to roam in the night and okay. then lock them up in the morning for security reasons. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So um, another question I want to ask is, how are you able to combine this with your full-time job? Yeah, actually, that's very stressful. A lot of, I mean, dogs are responsibility. They're, some, they're just like babies. You know, yeah. um, I have four adult dogs. Only one of them, okay, two. Let me be very nice to the second one. <laughs> two of them have um, um, good habits of, you know, um, defecating at the right time. Okay. And, you know, outside, not in their cages. While the other two can just, you know, defecate inside the, inside the house, and then they will step on it, and then they will step on the wall of the of the cage <laughs> ah and then you can imagine washing that every so messy. morning <laughs> yeah so every morning you tend to wash up that wow. place before you go to work if i go to work wow. so i woke up as early as wow. 5 30 sometimes 6 depending on how early i want to go to work and then or how early i needed in the office you know my i do a research job so sometimes i don't usually go out very early okay and then sometimes i go out very early so if in the day i go out very early i will need to like wake up very early and start cleaning up I don't have anybody I'm paying currently. I do the thing myself. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I, okay. I actually love doing it. Wow, awesome. I see I see you have the passion. Yeah. You have the passion for it. So it is always good to have a dedicated veterinarian that would monitor or examine your dog at every point in time. I have okay. one. I have a dedicated veterinarian, certified, knows what he's doing, understands the history of my dog, you know, he always comes around to say, okay, this is some of the things I've all um, examined. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay. So there's my Ken Koso, after we crossed her, after her first, second meet, we crossed her. And then we had to travel to Kaduna to go and cross her. Oh, wow. You took, yeah, her, to took her to Kaduna? Because we wanted, there's this beautiful blue eye Ken Koso meal. Wow. It's a pedigree. All the it's way important. in Kaduna. Yeah, it's important. By the way, we're filming from Abuja. He's based in Abuja. Yeah, so we had to take her to Kaduna. I had to ship her to Kaduna. So when she came back and she did not conceive, I was like, why? What happened? So, before the next hit, we had to take blood um, sample from her to take the progesterone, to the progesterone um, test to understand yeah. when she's at her peak period. Because sometimes they will say dogs are dogs are usually at their peaks at nine, day nine and day eleven and day thirteen. From day nine, you can start yeah. crossing your dogs. And some we now found out that actually some can come can be at their peak earlier, and oh. some can be at their peak later. Yeah, so because um, I did not understand the peak period, I had to um, um, take do a, prop, a proper blood work for the dog. Okay. Blood work, I mean, is take the blood sample, take it to the lab, and check, okay, what's the progesterone level, and all those things. So we did that, and then we still found out that her peak period is still from day nine. Her oh, proge wow. uh, progesterone and other yeah. hormones were very at their peak at that day nine. So. We did say we use the same. I mean, we, we started crossing her from day nine, crossed her the eleven and the thirteen. They were stopped. And then wow. she conceived. So Sounds, you have to. You have it's to have going to be. Though, it must have been very painful for you taking your dog all the way from Abuja to Kaduna. And he did not conceive. And he did not ah, conceive. Very, 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 very. How much do you pay? You know, to get your dogs uh, crossed. Crossed. Yeah. So um, it depends on the farm again. And it depends on the the kind of breed you are using. If it's a pedigree, a pedigree I mean it's an imported male dog. Oh, okay. So if it's an imported male dog, they can cost up to hundred thousand. Wow. And a puppy. So you cross, pay the person hundred thousand naira, 
And you also give a copy. copy. Yes. It's part of the contract. It's part of the deal. Yes. The part deal. Of the contract. Yes. Wow. Usually that's what we we hear in this area. You know, okay. other places they just outright payment. Some don't even. Um, some don't. I mean, take any money. You just pay some. Some do for free. It depends. Yeah. But for breeders, you pay the owner of the male dog a particular amount of money. Then you go ahead also to pay. Yeah, I'm give a puppy. Give a puppy. Yeah. So do you have like uh, male dogs too? That. Yeah, I, I I have a male rod. Or you just sell I have a male puppies. Rot. I have a male rod. Okay, that meets with. That meets with other. People. Yeah. So I have also have benefited. They, have they paid you? Uh, yeah, I've also oh, benefited nice. from they the. They gave you a puppy too. They gave me a puppy too. Yes. Oh, nice. Is it one of the puppies that grew up to become one of your dogs? No, no, no. I don't keep. Um, okay, you sold I them. Yes, I don't keep puppies for my for my dogs. Okay. I sell everything. Is there any reason for that? Yeah, because I, I have a male dog. I don't want to have inbreeding. Uh, okay. Inbreeding is uh, like when um, your in history, like the father of a dog, you know, meets okay. the daughter of the, the daughter. Dog. Okay. So I don't want to have inbreeding. Okay. Is there, not that, that is there any disadvantage manage. to inbreeding? Yeah, a lot of disadvantage. A lot okay. of disadvantage. But I don't know that I cannot manage them. It's just that, I mean, it's good to have variety. Okay. So maybe another female dog that another female bot. Okay. Can be used to uh, do that. Okay. So, um, how do you sell these dogs? Where do you get the market? Okay. So, um, we have a network of King Koso breeders in Abuja. Oh, okay. Yeah. A lot of people that are that owns King Koso dogs are in that network. Some, some don't. Okay. So, I have a network of friends that also own King Koso, and that is why I know. I understand the history of these dogs. Oh, okay. So I can say, okay, I'm going to this person's farm this year. Next year, I want a little touch of um, okay. blue or green. I want a touch of a touch of camo or kind of colors, different yeah. colors. So I like these guys. Um, blue, breed. Green. Yes, I want this color in my litter. So if I have a puppy, how long can I? How soon can I get it sold? If you have a puppy, uh, well, I've never kept a puppy more than one week. Wow. I'm not Within sure. one week. I'm not sure I have kept a puppy. More than a week. Maybe it's because I have one network of friends who who do the same business, yeah. and then of course I have veterinarians who are interested in buying from my farm. Because mm. I mean, like I said, I, I keep good breeds. Yes. Um, I didn't go into the business because I just love dogs. I went to the business because I also want to make profit. So okay. I decided to invest in buying good breeds. Wow. Dogs. Yeah. Sounds like a really good side hustle. It is. So where do you see your dog breeding side hustle in the next five years? And where do you see your career in the next five years? Okay, so in the next five years, I should have my farm. I mean, in a okay. place where I can have as many dogs as I want. Oh, okay. I don't mind having as many dogs as possible. I love so much. I love dogs so much, and I want so many breeds. I want a Doberman. I want a Pitbull. Wow. I want. Um, I, I don't people say I like mean dogs a lot, but I know. I mean, I just want lovely dogs. Yeah. They don't look ugly to me. They are so very beautiful. So I want a Pitbull. Nice. I want um, a Doberman. And then I want um, a, a Caucasian. I don't have a Caucasian. So I would like his space to so have a very good space so that okay, my dog so can run around. More variety and and more dogs. Yeah, so I can have more dogs. So in the next five years, I should be living in my own space. Okay. Um, or I should be in my own farm. Even if I'm not in my own, um, I should be in my own farm where I will have attendants attending to the dogs. Oh, okay. Or I should be living in my own compound where I can have as many dogs as possible in the next five years. Then the next five years, I should. I'm hopeful that I should have at least six to seven breed of dogs, different breed of dogs. Okay. Yeah. Currently, I have just three. Okay. So I want in the next five years to have at least six to seven wow. breeds. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I want to at least have a Lassa. I want to have a Pitbull, like I said, and I want to have a Dogger. Then, yeah. if I have the luxury of space, and of course, I will have a, a Caucasian. Oh, wow. Nice. So, are you going to? leave your full-time job at some point to focus on this business or what's the plan for your career because this is a side hustle right mm -hmm. so what's this what's the plan for your career in the next five years too okay so my career has I, my like i love my job again okay I, I, I love my job so much and i'm dedicated to um growing both myself and uh, supporting the growth of that um that job that um, organization organization so it has nothing to do it has never interfered with my my job. Okay. Um, my bosses know I own dogs. Okay. So they oh, don't, nice. yes, I mean, I I've told my boss one time that ah my dog is not feeling too well. How is your dog doing now? 
my colleagues in the office know I, I own dogs. Oh, wow. So it's not it's not something that interferes with my job, not at all. And then I like I said, in a situation where I'm going to travel, I have someone who I trust that can come and okay, manage the dog care for them for a very long time. Even if I'm going away for like a year. Oh nice. Yeah, I have someone that can manage the dog. Again, I can also board them. Like every canal can board if you have space. So for okay. me, I do boarding once in a while if I have time. Maybe what's boarding? Boarding is like for instance you're traveling, okay. and you have your dog. You want the dog you want the dog to be in a space for like okay. a month, two months oh, okay. till you come back. So I board your dog. Oh, you oh, pay for the oh, pay for. That's another it's um, it's way to make money in the from the business. Yeah, yeah. So oh. we board dogs. Um, I can board in a day for about three to four thousand naira, depending oh, on the breed of dog. Wow. That's yeah. like paying rent for the dog. Yes. So <laughs> you can multiply three to four thousand naira in yeah. three months. Wow. That's nice, nice a lot. Yeah. Awesome. So I bought dogs too. Oh, nice. So you just talked about boarding dogs, and I think it's important to ask what are the streams of income? What are the ways, different ways that one could make money from this dog breeding business? Okay. So I know about littering, um, mating of the male dogs. Yeah. Now you're yeah. talking about boarding. Yeah. So another one is consulting. I consult oh, for consulting too. Yes. Okay. I consult for people's farms. Um, okay. I come to your farm, I look at your dog, I share ideas with you. Um, okay. I have a vet that works for me. Okay. Um, it's part of my um, business um, organization. So we consult the veterinary doctor certified. He can come to your farm and do you full time or part time? A full time veterinarian. Oh, wow. A full time veterinarian certified practicing. Okay. Yeah. So no, no, I'm talking about is it working with you full time or part time? Full time. Full, full time. time. Wow. Yes. Full Amazing. Time. Yes. Full time veterinarian. So, um, then he goes also to advise that, I um, mean, professionally in terms okay. of, then uh, we consult. We can also help you produce the feeds. Okay. Um, if, for instance, you have challenge getting the right formula. Yeah. Adequate protein, adequate um, carbohydrates, sufficient fat to help them grow, and all those things. If you don't know the right formula, we can help you get good formulas oh, and help you amazing. produce them. So, we can help produce meals. Then we can also um, do the, what do you call it, the vaccines, the vaccinations okay. and okay. the management for your dog. Then we do body, we body your dogs. Okay. Then uh, for the veterinarian, he does the dog baths, he does the dog uh, um, uh, hair cutting and management pruning and all those things. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. So for someone who has a full-time job and who is considering a side hustle, what words of advice could you have for them? Um, first thing is, I would advise every young person that wants to start up a side hustle to identify what you are interested in. It's not just um, wanting to have a side hustle. What are you interested in? What do you have passion for? It mustn't be dog uh, business. It can be uh, POS. It can be any kind of um, um, small business enterprise. Yeah. Once you have passion for it, that is the first thing. Identify what that passion is. Then the next thing is, do you have the capital to start? Nobody should tell you you should start a business without capital. Every business needs capital. Okay, so even if you're just consulting in that business, okay, your knowledge in that area is also part of it. Of course, you have to go and learn everything about that area because um, apart from the fact that I know about dog business, the ones I can't provide for myself, I consult other people to do. And that is me knowing what I can do and what I cannot do in the business. So your knowledge in the area, your passion, your knowledge in the area, your capital, and your willingness to continue you have to be consistent, you have to be focused, you have to be determined to continue even when the business is not productive. So you have to just keep pushing, keep pushing. Wow. Side hustle is side hustle, <laughs> not your main hustle. So nice. you just have to keep on pushing gradually, patiently till it becomes profitable. Sometimes side hustles pay more than your main job. Yeah. yeah. So it's just for you to be able to identify the interest, build it, get knowledge about it in the building. Wow. Yeah. This has been a very wonderful time. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for watching. I, I hope you were able to pick one or two from this video. So please don't forget to like the video if you got any value from it and subscribe for more content coming up. Yeah. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.